everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel again. I am so glad that you're here with me today and I'm really thankful that you've decided to come and share card making with me. So today it's going to be a short video because I'm just going to demonstrate how I made this card because several people on Facebook when I posted it said how did you do that and what did you do and it's one of the cards that I actually made for my 3D embossing workshop. So you can see there it has texture in it from 3D. And no, it's not pattern paper. So I wanted to show you how I did it. You won't believe how easy it is. And um, you can do it with all kinds of things. So for instance, this is another one that I made for my workshop, same process and you can see the 3d embossing there it just is so easy so then i got curious because both of those are on white so i got curious the other day and decided to use something on black to see if it would work and this is the one that i came up with that actually nobody else has seen yet you can see the 3d pattern in it it's very patterned and floral and then i put it on a backing with some gold edging on it and I embossed dry embossed a stencil in there of stripes but basically we're looking at the actual pattern itself and you can see that there's embossing on top of the flowers and you could have done this with one big sheet but I I didn't I I patched it together and I'm going to show you how all that works so for the other two, I used these collage papers from Tim Holtz. And you can see that the one is black and white and the other one has flowers and birds and all kinds of wonderful nature images on it. And so these are what I use. They're, they're collage paper, but they're like really thin tissue paper. And so for the black one, I thought, well, I wonder if I could just use some gift wrapping paper that I had, and I had this black. So I thought, well, we'll see if it works on black, and at the same time, see what happens with just regular tissue that's for gift wrap. And um, it worked great. So any kind of tissue paper, rice paper, anything like that would work for this. It's basically, uh, the same thing as decoupaging, but you're just decoupaging on paper and on your card instead of onto furniture or a tray or something like that. So if you've done any decoupaging, you're well set up to be doing this. So let's get started and look at what other supplies you need. First, you'll need the tissue paper like I just showed you. Then you're going to need some cardstock, whatever one you want to use. For the black and white card, I used a white piece of cardstock that was four inches by five and a half inches. And then I used the backing, which makes this black edging on it right here. I don't think you can see that in the camera. Can you see that it has a black edging on it? So the white cardstock was four inches by five and a half. And the black was your standard uh, A2 size card, four and a quarter by five and a half. So you just need that cardstock. For the yellow one, I didn't put a border on it, so I did it plain onto a regular A2 size white cardstock, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. And the black one I also did with an, a smaller piece. But mainly we're gonna focus on this card today, just for me to illustrate how I did it. I'm going to show you the technique but I'm not going to finish the card because mainly it's the technique that you wanted to know about and you can add whatever type uh, sentiment you want on your own card. I just wanna show you the technique. So you need the cardstock, you need the tissue paper, and of course you're going to need a 3D embossing folder. So on the white and black one, I use this one, which is brick wall. On the yellow one, this one, I used deck planks and on the black one I used whimsical bouquet. So you need your tissue paper, your cardstock, your 3D folder, 
And then you're going to need something to attach the tissue paper to the cardstock. So what I used was just matte fluid medium and I used the fluid kind because it was not as thick as the, as the gel kind that comes in a jar. But I think you could use watered down white glue, you could use Mod Podge, you could use all kinds of things for this. But this is what I used and it worked really well, a matte fluid medium, and it's just really easy to do. You're going to need a paintbrush. That's about it. I'm going to put some of this medium into a little cup. I got this idea from someone on YouTube and it was so great. I ordered some of these little cups from Amazon and they come, you know, a gazillion in a package and they're really cheap. And it's so nice for just things like this or, you know, alcohol when you're doing alcohol inks to put your alcohol in here just a little bit at a time. So they're really nice and, if, and you can wash them out, but if you don't wanna wash it out, you can just toss it. So I'm putting that in there, getting ready. I'm going to get my piece of four by five and a half inch cardstock and have that ready. So let's go. Okay, so I have my cardstock and here's the tissue paper. You can see it comes, there's a lot on a roll. So you could do this a lot um, and have lots to work with. You know, it's not like skimpy. So you can pick whatever design you want to pick. Um, I find that it works a lot better, just like in decoupage, that you tear it rather than cut it. It doesn't really matter if there's uneven edges because they're not going to show. So I'm just tearing this out here, trying to get exactly the flower here that I wanted to get. And let's see how that looks on our paper. That looks really good. I'm going to cut off, tear off this upper edge here. And I'm going to tear off these letters on the edge. Let's see here. Just going like that. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm such a perfectionist. Everything has to be exact, but I'm finding that things like this, they don't need to be exact whatsoever. So you can just tear it off and just see where you want to put it on your card. And I think I need something on the top as well. So this will work. I'm going to weight it down with my paintbrush here. This will work for the bottom. And then I think maybe I want to turn these, these things over from the top. You know, just play with it. See what you want to do. See which pattern seems to go with what you're wanting to do. I kind of like that flower right there, this daisy-like flower. There. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some scissors after all, only because it's kind of in the middle. And I'm going to do some general cutting around it. My fussy cutting scissors here. I have a fan going because it's kind of warm in my room and I think the fan is blowing the tissue paper. Let's see here. Okay, I think that's all I'm gonna need. So I'm gonna roll this back up again, put it away. Really seriously, you're not gonna believe how easy this is. I just thought about it one day and I saw Amber Rain Davis did something kind of similar, but not exactly. Um, and I just got this idea from watching what she did and thought, okay, I'm gonna try that in a different way. And, um, and it worked. So, you know, it's so neat to be able to watch other crafters and they have their own ideas about how they do something, but then you can you know, you can be inspired to come up with your own plan. And that's how this happened for me. I'm just taking out some of these little irregular pieces. This is more time consuming than anything else we're gonna do. And let's see here, I'm gonna tear this top edge because I don't like scissor cuts. They, they tend to show up and I don't, I don't like that. I like it when it's kind of raw edged. 
it blends in better. Okay, now let's see. I don't know like that's that either. Okay, if I put that there and I put this here, kind of like that, that printing I want to make up and down. Okay, I like that. And then I have room over here for a sentiment. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, this is so easy. I'm just gonna take an underneath sheet here. And what I'm gonna do is just like decoupage. I'm gonna take my brush in my little container, dip it in there. I don't want very much. I just want a very little bit. And I'm going to just put it on there Put this matte medium or whatever you're using, Mod Podge, whatever, just a little bit, because you're just working with tissue, so you don't need tons on the cardstock. And I am using 110 cardstock here, by the way. I think 80 is a little bit thin to take this treatment. So once I get that spread on there, I know you can't see it because it's white on white, but I'm just going to then put my tissue paper right on there just like so. Stick it down. It will stick very easily there. And then I'm just going to take a little bit more. You may get a little bit of a wrinkle in there. I don't have any wrinkles in this, uh, but you might get a little wrinkle, but it makes absolutely no difference. And when, when you do the 3D embossing, you're going to see, you'll never see a wrinkle in there. So don't worry about it. Just spread it like that. I find that this kind of a paintbrush works the best rather than like a round brush. Okay, we're gonna do just the same thing in the bottom corner. I'm just gonna see where I wanna put my image and where, how much that's gonna cover, which is pretty much the whole bottom of the card. So we're just gonna spread this on I mean, really, this is so easy. I, I was kind of embarrassed when everybody just loved these cards because I thought, oh my goodness, if you knew how easy it was, it's not like everything I do, nothing is, is a fancy dancy technique. It's just fun things to do that are easy and they come out looking like you did way more than you did. Okay, that's done. I'm gonna put this down. And just stick it down and I know you see those edges now but trust me by the end you are not going to see those edges it's just going to merge right into the white that is one thing I would say is that both of these Tim Holtz papers have a white background on them and I used them on white cardstock and the, I'm going to take this little piece off right there because it's a little black dot in the middle okay and then the um, gift wrap paper that I used was on was black tissue with floral on it and I used it on black cardstock so you know I do think you it's important to use something that's going to blend in now if you wanted to cover the entire piece of cardstock with maybe a multi-floral or maybe pieces of blue and pink and yellow kind of like layered on to be like a mosaic you know you wouldn't have to worry about the background but when you've got something like this and you're wanting it to in the end look like this which is that it's printed on the paper then you want to match the color of the tissue with the color of the cardstock that you're using okay the next thing I'm going to do is just let this dry and after it's dry I'm going to trim off these extra edges over here I'm just going to fold them over right now and I'm going to trim them off and then we'll do the next step and then we're almost done and that's it. So I'll see you back after this is dry. Welcome back. As you can see this is pretty dry now. It's 99% dry and already you can't really see where the edges are with this paper and the cardstock. You can if you look really close but by the time we're done you won't be able to see them at all. So I did go ahead with my scissors, my long scissors, and just cut off 
uh, the edges. One part when I folded it over had really stuck down, so I just left that and we're all ready to go. But before we move forward, let's look back a little bit just to be sure that we have the process down right. So we start with a piece of heavy cardstock. Uh, I used 110. I would not really use 80 or 60 because you are going to get it wet and you know you don't want it to warp a lot. So I used 110 and you're gonna cut it the size that you want it to end up being. Then you're gonna take some tissue paper like I said, I used the Tim Holtz collage paper, tissue paper of some sort, and you're going to tear it out, whatever pattern you want, however you want it laid out on your card. And then you're going to take your brush and either matte medium or Mod Podge or watered down liquid glue or whatever you want to use and what you have on hand. And you're going to just put it on the card stock first underneath where you want to place your tissue and then you're going to put the tissue on top and put another thin coat over the tissue paper to adhere it and you're going to do the same thing with however many pieces you have so be sure you put a very light coat on you don't want to just make it thick liquid on there just really really light and then you just let it dry and you trim off the edges and that's where we are now so we're ready to do our 3D embossing. So the first thing is that, as I have said all the way through every time I have, have made a video, you need to have the right sandwich for you. There is no one right sandwich for everybody. Even if we all had the same machine, it wouldn't be the same sandwich necessarily. So you decide what you need for you. And I will put on the screen a couple of the um, previous YouTube videos that I made that go into more detail on that. This is my sandwich. I, I think I am gonna add a metal shim into it today just to be sure that it's gonna come out well. I'm gonna take my folder, which is the brick wall folder, and I'm gonna put it in here. Now I would say that another design element is choosing the right folder for the pattern that you're making. Now, as you can see on my card here, how the bricks look. I, I felt that it matched those flowers. I felt that if I put a floral pattern on this, it wouldn't come across with the same end look that I really wanted. So you have to put some thought into, okay, which pattern will enhance my tissue paper pattern, but will not overpower the card so that all that somebody sees is 3D embossing. You want them to merge together in your design so that they seamlessly go together and look good together. So you want to do some thought as to, you know, which folder you want to put with which type of tissue paper. On this one, I knew that I was going to uh, put a ribbon or some kind of trim horizontally on there. So I did the planks. I wanted to put a tag on it, so I picked an embossing folder that had horizontal grain to it so it would all flow together. And on this one, I did do an all over floral, as you can see, on top of floral. And in these flowers, I actually layered the tissue paper together. It's not just one big piece. I just wanted to see what it would look like and I wanted to see if the black would work. So it was kind of an experiment. I do like the way it turned out. I did use a floral on here, but I think the reason the overall floral works on this, I wasn't sure that it was going to, but it does look good. And I think the reason is because it's on black and somehow it merges into the black background and it, it all goes together. So I'm just wanting to point that out that it's a design you're making a design. So you want to make sure that it flows together and you want to give some thought as to what pattern would go with what pattern so that it doesn't get too busy or it doesn't just say, oh, I'm so plain. You want to have something in between. So something that merges together. So I'm going to put this in here in the uh, brick pattern. Straight. Oh, I made it go cocky for a minute. There we go. Oh, well, Sandra, 
Normally I would not have to tape this, but I'm beginning to think maybe I should. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna go run it through my machine off camera because I don't want to have you have the noise of the whole thing and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So let's see how this turned out. Oh, there it is. See, look, look at the, the pattern and the definition that you have in that. Now, can you see where the tissue matches, go, emerges with the white paper? No, you can't see it at all. It just looks like pattern paper or people will look and say, how did you do that? And it's just as simple as that. Just decoupage the, the tissue and let it dry, trim it, put it through your 3D folder after having matched whatever pattern you want. And then with this, I put it onto the black. Let me put some white under here so you can see it. I put it on the black background. It looks like my black piece is a little bit long, so I'm gonna have to trim that off. And then I added a sentiment, and there you have it, just like that different flowers, but the same tissue paper. And you can add whatever sentiment that is appropriate for you. And there you have it. All you have to do is finish the card however you want to finish it. You finish it in your way with your design and your sentiment and how you want it to be because I don't want this to look like me. I want it to look like you. I want you to feel free to just be artistic and creative and Figure out your own style. Figure out your own style. I'm so excited to see what you come up with. I hope that you'll po post things that you make on Facebook or on Instagram and, and um, let me know that you do by either tagging me or just messaging me so that I know to look for it in case I, I, I wouldn't want to miss them. But how easy is this and how fantastic does it look? And the problem with it is this. This is the one problem that I have come to find out. Do you know how many pretty patterns there are of tissue paper and collage paper out there? There are tons of them. And so I'm likely to get addicted to it. I've been looking at them and buying them and um, I'm really addicted to this whole technique. So this is the problem. It could get expensive for you, but tissue paper isn't the worst it could be. So anyway, have fun, experiment, be creative, be you, and I'll see you next time.